Internet, welcome back to Rage Against the Dice. You're here with Nate for Paint with Nate. Um, this is part two of my Corvina paint uh, paint series. Um, and we're going to work on the dress today. Now, as the keen eyed amongst you will see, I've already made a start, which all I've done so far is I've basically I've given the dress a base coat. Now, the reason for that is because, well, obviously I have to base coat it, and there's nothing I'm really, you know, you're going to learn from that really. It's it, nothing fancy, it's just a base coat, and I base coat it with uh, Sido Rakarth Flesh, because um, it gives a nice off white um, start, um, and I'm going for the coloration that you'll see on Server Studios' website and some of their media where they use. There's um, a model called Janet in Cosplay who does a fantastic job of being um, of being Corvina. So I thought I'll take that inspiration. So, base coat's there, it's all nice and dry. And where I'm going to go next is I'm going to start, start um, shading. I'm going to go for... A, ba a ba basic shading technique, I'm just quickly checking something. So I have a, I have a recipe book that I always look at. Right, so what I'm going to start with is um, some Vallejo German Camo Beige. I'm going to paint this into the creases of all, so all the different bits, so just so you can actually see what I'm doing. Just a little bit on my palette there, and I'm going to use my thinning medium. Because with, with such a light colour, it can be a little unforgiven. So I want to try to get a nice smooth transition. Uh, not a lot, just just enough to thin it out. It's not a huge difference in colour anyway. So then it's a case of just going through where the creases are. And adding a bit of depth. Right, so I'm just gonna a little bit, a little bit here where the dress meets the belt. Just kind of give the belt a natural shadow. I chase that around the back, and basically I'm starting off with everywhere that I can see a crease. And for its full disclosure, yes, I too have just seen the bit that I've completely missed the base coat, but I'll touch that up. It's not actually going to matter at this stage, so I'm going to finish shading and then go back there. So I've got these creases here. Oh, got these okay, creases here in the clothing. I'm just going either side of that to kind of highlight them. Well, literally not highlight them, but yeah, um, draw the eye towards them, because so the model doesn't look quite as flat. If if I left that as a base coat, you know, you you run, you do run the risk of when you have quite plain clothing, of it looking flat and a bit lifeless. So it's it's worth just putting that little bit extra effort in when you're doing. Doing this to um, just give it give it a bit of shape, you know. You get out what you put in, so there we 
go you can always see that's got a nice bit of body to it I'm just going to add a little bit there because I've had a quick look on the camera and I can see that I need it just a little bit more there there right cool so step two is I'm now going to take some US field drop Vallejo color again I'm going to add about 50 50. So, one blob. Get a mix in. There we go. And I'm now. There we go. You're in focus. Drawing that out a bit. So I'm, I'm now just a bit more just where the the, the recesses are deepest. Just edging that shadow there. Sometimes I find with this that less is more. With you, with you, gave you darker highlights. You know, you don't want to go over everywhere that as uh, your darker shades, not your highlights. Durr. Um, you don't want to go go literally everywhere you want your first first shade because there's and no point having done your first one. So there. I'm going to leave that at that. Um, I think that looks pretty effective. Um, put it all the way in there. And I'll be back in a minute when I mix the highlights. Okay, we're back and now it's time to go for the highlighting. So I'm going to do pretty much the exact opposite of just done. I'm now going to look for raised areas. So I'm going to start with my base coat. Yeah, that's awful, sorry. Uh, I've got flesh base coat. I'm gonna get some of that out. Add it to this here palette. A little bit more than that. I'm gonna add some medium. Got a bit thinner. There we go. So we've got a good start there. Now, I'll just add some white. Now, I'll use Coat Darm's white because I like it. It's got a nice smooth finish to it. But some people prefer Vallejo. Some people prefer GW. Use whatever you like. So, put that there. And add some to my mix. I'm going to do this in two stages. Same as before. So, first one, I just want it to be quite... Because with something this smooth, if I just go for a, um, a straight, straight, uh, straight highlight, it's gonna look too stark. It's gonna look too edgy, and she's gonna end up looking cartoony. So I'm going in a two two stage this one. Now it is very important to thin your paints when you're doing this one. Um. I mean, it'll do a people. I'll notice people on the internet showing it's important to always thin your paints, but I mean, particularly here, um, because light colors, especially, and doing large areas like this, it can be very unforgiving. So, if you thin your paints, yes, uh, because you have that little bit more transparency. The edges from where you paint and you don't paint um, don't look quite stark. So it uh, basically makes your job easier for blending and whatnot. So uh, yeah, just thin your paints. makes your job easier. you get a better result for less effort. What more can you ask? So... 
So we're gonna go here up to these raised areas. It's gonna catch the light. Same on this side. Now I've got to say, this is a gorgeous model to do this on because all the areas are well defined, the details lovely and crisp, and uh, I'm having a good time doing this. There's times with models where maybe maybe the uh, the sculptor has not had quite as uh, a good good um grasp of how how clothes lie and it's an absolute nightmare to kind of determine where the creases are you know what is a crease what isn't where you know where a crease leads to so you can have a bit of a you're having a bit of a fight with the model and well, that's not fun but this is beautiful so um i'm loving this i'll be honest um that, that's the basic thing. Oh, that's a rough So just uh and even this you can see it doesn't actually take you that long to do. Right. Touch it on the back. Last bit. This this big curve here. Alright. So we can see there this kind of lovely shape to the dress here. Um so I'm now just gonna go back, add a bit more white. Uh, just round everything up a bit more as after I finish this bit off. Right, a little bit more white. A little bit more. There we go. Now I'm just going through very fine lines, very fine edges, just where light catches. There's a trick that I use sometimes, especially if I'm not quite sure. I've got a lot to do where I'll put the the model under under quite a like just kind of under one of my desk lamps. Kind of and uh, then take a picture because then I can see I can see where where the light catches and I'll try to emulate the um, the exaggerated shadows and the exaggerated highlights just so you can you get a nice natural finish that way. Sorry, you can't see that. I'm being a 
not a very good uh, YouTube post today, sorry about that. But uh, it's the pin vise, the way I've got it, it does actually make this where it is, it's fine for painting. It is actually quite awkward for filming because half the time the pin vise is in the way of the camera. <laughs> so, uh, but you'll be happy to know that once I've got, I've got the hair base coated, I'm probably going to attach the model to her base and you won't have to worry about that anymore. Right, so let's go through. Let's have a look at that. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. I think. I think we've got a nice. Yeah, we've got a nice um texture going on there. Um, so yep, I'm gonna call that. I'm gonna call that a job done, and. Uh, Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on the next video, which will move on to the hair next. Bye-bye.